Bonnaroo 2023, last day and best for last. We think so. Sammy Ray? Yeah, how you doing? Here I am. So happy to be here. Um, what a weekend that you've had, yes. senorita. Yes. First of all, last night the Super Jam, unbelievable. You rocked it. Thank you. With Corey Wong and with the whole gang. Yeah. And yeah. then today we saw you kill that ginormous stage. Yeah. Yeah. And you treated it like, like it was like, I don't know. The Rockwood Hall in New York. I don't know, like some little venue. You just had it at the table. Yeah, I mean, you have to, right? So we actually, we played our biggest hometown show ever, Central Park Summer Stage. Yeah. Um, 5,000 people uh, on Thursday. I went to my house for about three hours. I slept for about 90 minutes. Took a flight to Nashville. Drove to the Airbnb. Uh, slept a couple hours. Got up early for a Super Jam rehearsal. Saw some music and took in the whole festival yesterday. Um, Super Jam was just... Amazing, uh, so many talented and kind musicians in one place um, collaborating. It was just so special, definitely a core memory. And then to wake up and play the main stage at Bonnaroo, it was just, uh, it was just stupendous. It was just phenomenal. It, it, I, something I will be processing for a very long time. Um, and it's all gratitude. It's yeah. just amazing. It's just amazing. You have to play every show like it's. Rockwood Music Hall, shout New York, I love you. Um, but you have to, you have to play every show like that. It's, it's, that's what the audience deserves, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's easier said than done, Sammy, because you do do that. Like I have seen you in like you know festivals like Rooster Walk, small, medium, big stages, and you always give audience like like your 100 million percent. Is that like easy to do? You know. Um, yes, and there, you have to. Again, it's not up to me it's not somebody's fault if they can only afford to or live close to a smaller festival or a smaller venue or if they can come to Bonnaroo and be in a crowd with all these different people you know and everybody deserves the same thing that we try to give at every friend show which is you give us full permission and trust to be our fully authentic bananas self and we give you permission to do the same thing in the audience it's a place for you to come and be yourself and make friends and uh, dance and have a great time and um, city to city, venue to venue, got to give everybody the same show. Everybody deserves the same show, you know, Depend doesn't matter where you are in the country or in the world, everybody deserves the same show. There are some variables with outdoor festivals like lights are different. Uh, Bonnaroo right now is a bit of a dust bowl, so I was trying to <laughs> blow my nose. Fish. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. That's that uh, trailer um, running. There's there's some bathrooms here that are trailers, but they have running water, and I did a little. A little tilt. Yeah, 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 a little, a little. <laughs> psh, psh, psh. Um, but yeah, uh, really hot today. Yeah. It's it, it's tough when it's really really it's hot. It's hard to breathe right now. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to breathe. You're sweating really hard, but also like your clothes are falling off, your in ears falling out. So a little bit of adjusting that uh, because of the temperature. Um, but it could be worse. It could be freezing. So uh, yeah, just really special show. I love it, Sammy. Sammy, you have um, European tour coming up, world tour. You're cooking a new album. Yeah. See, it, it wasn't fake. You're cooking a new. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> The best. You're cooking a new album. Yes. European tour coming up. So exciting. Do you do you get a chance? I feel like the last three years for you have been like nonstop. Do you get a chance ever to just kind of like? connect for a week and kind of like take it in like what do you do to ground yourself and kind of like wow like everything you've done you know yeah totally um, it's actually been a really special uh, last couple of months we got home from a US tour I think it was or sorry we, we did a US tour and then we went to the UK got home from the UK tour I believe in February I can yeah. barely remember yeah. um, so we've had a couple months to sit still And live in my house in Brooklyn um, and in that time I've been writing the album and you can't really write authentic quality music unless you're grounding and decompressing but it's been really special the last couple months I mean you're right we were pretty much non-stop on the road for like two and a half years yeah, yeah. literally two and a half years um, and then to come home and have a couple months in one place and not be coming out of one suitcase and going into the next suitcase um, it feels really good to feel like uh, a regular person's not the right way to say it, um, but nothing about what we do for a living in and of itself is like normal. You know, we're always going from place to place. But to be able to like 
go to my corner grocery store, see my deli guys, see my nice neighbors and help them like sweep the block, um, go to my gym near my house and you know, walk around the park near my house. It's been really special to feel connected to my neighborhood, to feel connected to Brooklyn again. That's been very grounding and of course it's provided a great, yeah. I don't understand how people can write albums on the road. The album is where I, like I said, fill up my sponge, source a, yeah, source a lot of inspiration. And then I need to come home, ground, process. I just kind of disappear from the world for the first 48 hours off, off the road, try to process all that gratitude and all that. Um, I write at home. And then when we get together as a band to kind of breathe life into new songs and arrange them, we almost exclusively like disappear to nature, which is as far away as you can be from being in front of 5,000 people who are screaming is to be in the middle of nature. So we just had a nice little writing retreat. About a week we were out in like rural Vermont working on the album. Um, so yeah, I, I like to come home, write my songs there at my little home studio, and then uh, take the band to the woods somewhere and arrange them. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me leave you with this. Um, thank you so much for your time. And I want to thank you because every time I've seen you, and, and I've, you've been in our radar for like three years now, you're an example that, you know, we can all have our bad moods or our bad days, but your emotional home where you live in is important. And I'm sure that you, like everybody, you're human. You have episodes of rage. You have episodes of sadness, depression. But you always come home and you're an example that, like, you can live in a place of love and a place of light and a place of giving. And that, that's an example because, you know, we are all allowed to feel the spectrum. But we always come home. And your home, Senorita, is love, God or whatever you believe in and giving. So thank you, Sam. I bless you. That's so nice. <laughs> Welcome to Bonnaroo 2023, the final day, the best for last, I would say, because we have Joel here of Humphreys McGee. How you doing? I'm doing great, doing great, Jamie. How are you? You just got off stage. Unfortunately, I missed it, but everyone is saying it's one of the best shows of the weekend. Uh, yeah, definitely the uh, the best show of the festival. I mean, everybody <laughs> has dropped their prior favorites. It's crazy. How, how did it feel out there? How's the energy? How's the Bonnaroo energy? Bonnaroo is always a special event. You know, we've been playing it since 2002. Yeah. You know, I was saying earlier, probably nine or ten of them we've played. So, I mean, this is like the original awesome festival that yeah. kind of happened on our scene. So to still be a part of it, you know, 20 years later is, uh, is a special thing. And, you know, you think about that, like, there are probably children of people that originally saw us at Bonnaroo that are here Absolutely. now. <laughs> well, let me ask you about that because when you guys came on the scene, you guys were like the fresh kids, like with a fresh new sound, and now you're like a legacy act, a very respected, beautiful, and applauded, but like kind of like a legacy act in a way. Like, like you guys have left a mark. How do you see that? Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's wild to uh, we're in our 25th year right now, so yeah. um, I think we've almost played 3,000 shows, and it's the craziest feeling because it once feels like we've been doing it forever, but at the same time feels like it really hasn't been that long. It's just you know the time flows differently when you're playing music, um, but uh, it's really special to be able to play with my friends, play with this group of guys, and. You know, to do some of the things that we've uh, even done the past couple of years. We did a three-night stand in Iceland and, uh, you know, brought our fans over there to Reykjavik and played the Harpa Concert Hall, which is this beautiful, you know, where the symphony plays there. Um, you know, we've uh, continued to play. We just played uh, Red Rocks last night and the night before and then uh, stay, stayed up and just hopped on a flight. And, yeah, here we are for Bonnaroo. So... You know, we're, we're getting to play a lot of the uh, places that we always hoped, you know, someday we would play. And, you should write uh, a book, Joel. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny you say that uh, because I uh, actually did write a book. Amazing. It's called The Realist right. Guide to a Successful right. Music Career. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you can find it on Amazon, the uh, the Open's website, but it's got a lot of... Um, it's kind of based on conversations with other musicians. Yeah. Huey Lewis is in there, Chuck Lavelle, Victor Wooten, Taylor right. Hicks, Susan Tedeschi. Yeah, um, right. You know, Ivan Neville. A lot of uh, a lot of different musicians that have been successful in different ways. And so I, I think, you know, I, I I wanted to write the book because it's easy to make mistakes. It's hard to be a good musician and a good businessman. You yeah. know. Yeah. And. You've got to figure some of that stuff out earlier. You're going to spin your wheels and 
you know, waste a lot of energy doing, doing, uh, doing things that aren't productive. So, um, trying to help other musicians avoid some of the mistakes that I made and that we made sure. as, as a band. So sure. that, that was kind of the, the reason for writing it. Yeah. Thinking of the book, you got me thinking of Chuck Lavelle and all the influences you've had and, and, and all this stuff that people that influence you in the keys world. What is the pipeline right now for like young keys player? Like, like do, do you see like a lot of like up and coming, like really like? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think now it's, you know, I, I think of people like Jacob Collier, who's playing the festival today, um, an amazing multi-instrumentalist, you know, keyboardist too, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jesus Molina is another guy that uh, I've been turned on to that plays, uh, that's from LA and just this incredible, just masterful player. Sure. Um, you know, I always say, <coughs> like, Corey Henry is one of my... Uh, favorite players formerly played the snarky puppy now he's got his own Corey Henry and the Apostles that guy is just doing absolutely mind-blowing stuff so yeah I think there's uh, there's a lot of great young musicians out there creating music in the keyboard world that are you know it's more diverse than ever and with all the technology and sounds that we can now create you know you can have I have a pretty analog rig I have a B3 organ and a Fender Rhodes but I also have a mini mode Voyager and a sequential profit, so kind of straddling the line of having some modern things and having some Absolutely. analog classes. Some analog stuff. Yeah. I mean, you just mentioned Red Rocks, so many great uh, venues that you've played, but I want to ask you about Summer Camp, which we just were like late May. Uh, a special place for you guys. And uh, it looks like it's the end of that festival in that, at least in that, uh, as we know it. Can you talk a little bit about that, what the festival meant and kind of like what your feelings are? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's of course a little bit uh, bittersweet, um, but I, I think also you look at it, a festival that was able to exist in the same place for 25 years, yeah. it's pretty amazing. That's a great run, yeah. you know? Um, That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, we've had so many, so many good times playing there, and, you know, our, our co-hosts, the guys in Mo, um, were super gracious to have us on as co-hosts back in about 2007 or 8. Sure. Uh, it was originally kind of their festival, right? And uh, so, you know, this year being able to close it out, we actually played on the same stage for the first time in about probably 12 or 13 years, mm -hmm. and it was really special to have that time. We actually did a set together yeah. with most of our band playing, right? Like, you know, at the same time. So, uh, and then we just got to do that at Red Rocks too. They played with us at Red Beautiful. Rocks. So, uh, but summer camp back to summer camp. Yeah, it was. It was uh, you know, an amazing, and I, you know, the Goldbergs, Ian and Jay, um, they worked really hard to put on an independent festival, and I think that's something that uh, is incredibly hard to do in, yeah. in today's environment when you have a lot of people who can outbid you for musicians and, you know, it just may, make life tough for trying Absolutely. to get the people that you want to play your event. So kudos to those guys for taking the risk year after year and, uh, you know, it's one that uh, that'll always be an amazing memory. It's the beginning of summer, you know. It's yeah. every Memorial Day, so yeah, I'll always think about that. By the way, Joel, are you a father? I am. I have uh, Happy two Father's kids. Day. Thank you. Appreciate Happy it. Father's Day. And you? Not a father. Okay. But okay. let me leave you with this. What's your why after all this time? Like you know, for you to take flights in the middle of the night, carry the gear, do all the nitty gritty, get the dirt on your face. It's easier than flying with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Yeah. yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for. Welcome to Bonnaroo 2023, and we're here with a shining gem, someone who's gonna be here many, many years. We have a we have a great sense, Ben Goldsmith. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, man. So, what's your first impression of your first Bonnaroo? It, it's just so much to take in, like like seeing some of my favorite artists just in like the catering and like just. It's like I've never played a festival before like this. So, so it's this like, is your first. This is really my first major festival. Oh, you're so. starting up in the right foot. Yeah. So ben, I, and I mean your story. I, I mean, just in the past like two weeks, can you just tell my audience about everything that's happened? You just graduated high school, I right? Just graduated high you school. graduated high school, re, re, uh, and you got a, your own record deal. Yep. And now you're playing Bonnaroo, and all this happened. I want to mm -hmm. tell my audience in like two and a half weeks, three weeks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty like crazy. Um, I'm, I'm, I literally just came from like my high school prom and like just drove off and here I am playing Bonnaroo. It's like insane. And then I announced like 
I got signed by Sony and I a publishing deal with Universal that I'm excited about and UTA is my agency so it's like all these crazy things happening at once Amazing. and it's like a crazy moment. How was your senior year of high school like because you have to do prom you know all yeah. the all the things that like a, a young man like yourself has to deal with in addition to all this exciting stuff was it like hard to get focused? Um honestly it, I was kind of just doing it day by day yeah. like when I wasn't when I was home I was just kind of like embracing the moments like just hanging out with my friends right. like hanging out on the beach in New York and eating some pizza like genuinely so uh, and on, and also I graduated a year early I, I'm actually a, a junior and just graduated this year because all this stuff started happening with Sony and stuff so do you have family and friends coming in today yeah my, my whole fam is gonna be here Absolutely. watching and screaming my name Hell so yeah yeah, Hell yeah. So Ben, how did this show come about? Because we heard that you went to the Live Nation offices in Nashville, yeah, yeah. and the rest is kind of history. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I did a little. Uh, I played a few songs for the people yeah. at Live Nation, and they were gracious enough to give me this opportunity. And like, you earned it, man. It, it's it's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. We're, we're ready to just rock our hearts out and it, play a set. Love it, brother. So, the world between my ears. We're super excited to hear it. Uh, it comes in September, correct? Yeah. It's September. It's your first debut album. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Like, how long have you been writing these songs? How long have they been like cooking for you and all that stuff? So yeah, I've been, it's been a it's been a minute. Um, I came down to Nashville um, because there's a pop producer named Brad Jones uh, in town here that you know I was jiving with. I met through my manager um, and. We were just kind of, ex I mean, I didn't really even find my sound yet. I was still 14, 15, and he was just like, why don't we use the studio like almost like a workshop for you to find what you want to do and just experiment. And that's what it kind of was initially. And as I started writing more, you know, in, at Alex the Great, the studio, there was just songs coming in and it was all kind of flowing in, in, a, in a cool way because Brad was kind of letting this like happen. And sure. Um, that's the songs that kind of, you know, those are the songs I wrote during that time. Right. You know, from, from, from then to now. Are you already writing new stuff for the oh, next yeah. one? It's a constant thing. I'm always writing, like, even before, you know, Bonnaroo. Like, last night I was up to, like, 12 a.m. just, like, writing. Is that weird for a songwriter? Because I always think, like, if I'm on stage and I'm, sing I'm out singing yeah. a song about someone that you're not anymore, like, is that almost, like, a little bit, like, weird? Um... No, because they, it kind of has its. I kind of view it like okay, you're. It has like two lives. A song like it. Okay. It's it's its thing where you know where you're writing the lyrics and, and you're humming melodies and it's kind of the essence of it when you're just kind of sitting down with your sure. pen and paper and writing it and figuring out melodies. But when you're you know applying that to the live show, it's a whole different thing because you have to keep in mind that you know. Your studio arrangement not might work live, so you kind of have to flip it on its head a little bit. Absolutely. So it's all different. All right, Ben. I know you have a busy day ahead. Are you nervous? No, I'm. I'm just so excited. I love it, dude. Uh, who else are you? Like, do, do you, are you someone that you want to see besides your own show? Oh yeah, like, I mean, the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Uh, I've seen them about four times, yeah. and probably the best show I've ever seen. Really? Uh, Major influence for you? Yeah, Dave Grohl is definitely a big influence cool. on me. Awesome, Ben. What a pleasure, man. Thank you for uh, Absolutely. taking the time. Absolutely. Until next time, we look forward to seeing your show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.